Let's open in our Bibles to 1 Samuel 16. The story of David and Goliath actually starts one chapter before the great confrontation in 1 Samuel 17. In verse 16, we find the reason why God wrote more chapters about David than anybody else in the Bible. If you carefully read all the way through the Bible and keep track of who's who, in 1 Samuel 16, we find the man that God wrote the most about. 141 chapters of the Bible are devoted to David. And the reason for that is probably because of verse 7. It says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. This is David's older brother. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward, but the Lord looks on the heart. God is always looking in every generation for someone who has a heart to see God, to see God's perspective, to look at life the way God sees it instead of the way we see it. We look at whether you're big and tall and handsome, then you're successful. But God says, obviously, David was not big and tall and handsome. You know what I mean? That's what his older brother was. That's what Saul was. Remember, Saul was a, from shoulders up taller than everybody else in Israel. He was the he-man. But God was looking for any size man that has a heart, because God looks at the heart. Well, the event of David and Goliath, you're standing in the, all of you here in the bottom of the riverbed are standing at the center point of the battle. Behind me on this hill, the Israelites. In front of me and behind you, the Philistines. For 40 days, look at 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 16. For 40 days, the Philistines came forward and, and took his stand. Down from the hill of the Philistines, their champion with his attendants would walk up to this edge of the river, and Israel was back there with their line of defense, and for 40 days, Goliath would come and mock God, the God of Jerusalem, up the valley here, the God of the Israelites. For 40 days, Goliath mocked God, and God's people stood and shook and were wavering. Their king, who was how much bigger than everybody else? Saul was a giant of Israelites. The giant of the Philistines was over there. Who should have met who? Right? The giant Israelite should have met the giant Philistine. But Saul didn't have a heart for the Lord. David was tiny. He was a teenager. He had the heart for the Lord. And so, it says in verse 20, David rose early in the morning and came here to see his brothers and to bring the food that dad sent. But David was someone God knew looked at life through his eyes, saw life the way God sees it. The whole Bible is about this. If you think about it, once Elisha was with his servant in the city of Dothan, and while they were there, they were surrounded by the enemy, and Elisha wasn't even concerned. And the servant says, oh, look, all the chariots are here. And he says, oh, he says, the ones that are with us are more than the ones with them. And the servant says, what are you talking about? All I see is this, all the Syrians. And Elisha says, God, could you open his eyes for a minute? And, and God opened the servant's eyes, and he saw the hosts of God who were surrounding them. And all of a sudden, he wasn't afraid either. David didn't look at this as the Philistines versus the scared Israelites. David looked at it as God facing those pagans. That's a whole different perspective. David saw life through God's eyes. He saw life from God's perspective. So look what happens. It changes, at this point in his life, the whole battle. He says in verse 26 at the end, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of, what's the last three words? The living God. All that Saul saw and the Israelites, they just saw themselves. David came down that valley from his home in Bethlehem and saw God and the armies of God. But he saw the living God. Nobody else seems to have seen God. If you keep reading, look at verse 36. David says it again. 
He says, for this Philistine, Goliath, has defied the armies of the living God. He saw, and if you look up over that mountain, if you could just see this gigantic, whatever you think of when you think of God, this gigantic, glorious light, David saw God and the little army in front of him. And he says, hey, you and God make a majority. Don't worry about them. Now, David starts talking about his life. Look at, at the next part of verse 20 or verse 37 of 1 Samuel 17. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, the paw of the bear, will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. David looked at life. When David was a little boy and he was a good slingshotter and he killed animals, he didn't think he did it. Who did he think killed the bear and the lion? God. See, we, we look at life, and you look at your past, and you said, hey, man, I was a track star. No, God helped you so that you made it. You say, I was a great sportsman. No, God helped you, and you played sports. You say, man, I have 25 businesses. I can't even count them all. No, God helped you if you see life the way David did. Do you know why David was written about so much? God says, hey, there's somebody that will see me in life. And I'm going to write more about him than anybody else so everybody knows how you're supposed to look at life. Look at life from God's perspective. David was God-hearted. Well, if you keep going in the story, verse 43 of 1 Samuel 17, David has come up to here. The Philistine has come out to there. And look what Goliath does in verse 43. When he got close enough to see him, the Philistine cursed David by his gods. So right over behind you, this big, burly pagan cusses at David coming because he's so little. And so David, as you know the story, he runs down this hill. You notice it says that, that he ran toward the Philistine. He comes down this hill, picks his five smooth stones, puts them in his pouch, puts one in the sling, runs up the hill behind you toward the Philistine, with his sling going. And he gets up there, and whammo, he gets him. You know the story. One stone, you know, got his man right between the eyes, boom, knocks him down, pulls out his sword, cuts his head off. That's the whole story. David could have defeated him with a straw and a paper wad. You understand that? He didn't need an M16. All he needed was, God used the tool he had. He was a shepherd boy. He had a slingshot. Great. If he would have been a, a musician and been good at bow and arrow, that would have worked. You understand what I mean? It isn't the means God used. It is the reason that God did it. God found one person. Look at this. Look at, at verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, with a spear and a javelin, but I come to you, and here's his God-heartedness, in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, verse 46, this day who will deliver you? The Lord. David didn't say, looking up at him from the riverbed saying, this day I'm going to defeat you. You see, there's a lot of arrogance nowadays. Uh, America, we trust in our military. We think we're tough. I think Israel trusts a little bit in their military these days. I hope that soon they get back to David's attitude. This day the Lord will deliver. Whatever giant you're facing in your life, don't go up and try your hardest to beat that giant, whether it be a giant of despair or a giant of disease or a giant of depression. Whatever you're facing, say the Lord will defeat you. That's the only hope we have. And so, verse 47 at the end, for the battle is the Lord's, he will give you into our hands. David ran forward, right up where you're standing, got his rocks, ran up the hill, nailed the Philistine, and that was it. God accomplished a great victory. Just for you to think about two more things. Why five stones? If you read the rest of the story, Goliath had four relatives that are later on met in different battles. Four other giants like him. David was not just going after Goliath. He was going to do them all. I mean, I mean, when you got the Lord with you, think big. The second thing is, what did David do with his trophy? Do you ever remember that? It says that after he killed Goliath right up there, he pulled out Goliath's sword, cut his head off, 
took his armor off and kept his sword. Where did that end up? Does anybody remember? He put it in the tabernacle. If you read David's life, David put all of his treasures before the Lord. When David died, he had amassed one of the greatest collections of wealth anybody. In fact, Solomon was the richest man on earth because he inherited all of David's stuff. David literally was the wealthiest man that ever walked on this planet. He had uh, billions and billions. He, he donated billions of dollars of gold to the temple. Why? Because he still had that perspective of God. David put all of his treasures, Goliath's sword and everything, in the temple, or in the tabernacle. He said, hey, God won the battle, he gets the treasure. I hope in our lives we start looking at life like David, seeing life like David did. David didn't see a little Israelite army, he saw God. He didn't see a giant, he saw a pagan that was defying God. And he had God behind him, and he just went up there knowing God was going to defeat Goliath, not David. Whatever you're facing, go toward, running toward that situation, knowing God is going to deal with that, not you. That's why David is the most written about and one of the greatest examples of faith in the Bible. Let's take a moment to bow. And with your heads bowed, I just want to share with you a couple of things to think about. I don't know what you're facing when you get back from the trip, but the Lord does. Why don't you just take a minute right here before I pray and think about what are you facing? Why not right here where the five smooth stones came from? You're standing right where the weapons were. Say, Lord, I want to look in your word for weapons. I want to find some stones to knock out the giants in my life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we stand right here in this brook in the valley of Elah. And I pray that we would find our weaponry to be the weaponry of the word of God, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that we would take your word as our, as our weapon in the battle that we face spiritually. Lord, we're going to face our adversary, the devil, kind of our Goliath, only far worse. And as we face him, we have our shield of faith, we have our armor, our breastplate of righteousness, truth girding our loins. We are those with our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But we're to have our sword in hand, which is the word of God. And I pray that we would take your word as our hope and the promise that we can use to defeat all the foes that you bring into our lives to see our heart. May we look at life the way you do, the way David did. May we be God-hearted. And I pray that right here standing, we would make decisions for how we're going to live when we get home and when we're in our everyday life. That's the real world. And we know David saw you in life. We want to see you in life. We know that David took you at your word. We want to take you at your word. And I pray that this would be the beginning of our walk in faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.